Want to know what the pathways to working as a general practitioner are in Australia? Well, watch this video. Hi there guys, Dr. Anthony Llewellyn here back with another video on YouTube. I'm the career doctor. I'm a real doctor who knows a lot about the medical career process here in Australia. Now I'm here to help you with managing your medical career, whether it be on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and a few other platforms as well. Another platform you can find me is the Advanced Med blog. And a couple of years ago, we had a expert GP write a blog on GP training and the various pathways for particularly international medical graduates to go into general practice. What I want to focus on in this video is the particular pathways for qualified GPs from other countries to be recognized by colleges here in Australia and get into specialist general practice practice. However, if you're wanting some more information about some of the alternate pathways, maybe you're a doctor who works in general practice but doesn't, for example, have qualifications in general practice, there are some alternate routes for international medical graduates to get into general practice, usually through alternate training routes. So this is one of the problems. It's General practice is probably one of the most confusing specialties in medicine in Australia in terms of understanding what your options are. But let's try and simplify it a little bit and explain some of the complexity for you. So the first thing you need to know is that if you're a specialist general practitioner from another country, you can be assessed as per the specialist pathway, similar to all the other specialists that can be assessed by the other colleges in Australia for specialist comparability. And you might want to check out some of my other videos on that topic, including the series on the specialist pathway. But the first confusing aspect is there are actually two colleges for general practice in Australia. There's the Australian College of Rural and Remote Medicine, which is the smaller college. It is essentially a general practice college with a focus on rural and remote medicine, but actually you can become a qualified general practitioner through this college and work anywhere as a general practitioner. And then you've got the more established college, which is the Royal Australasian College of General Practitioners, the RACGP, which is probably the one, the college that most specialist GPs will apply via, because in order to apply versus the Australian College of Rural and Remote Medicine, you do have to show some extra credentials around, particularly uh, rural and remote um, practice and, and perhaps having some extended skills and that sort of thing. But you have two options and you should probably check out both of them if you're thinking of applying. So the first thing is, how do we find the, the appropriate pages on both sites in terms of where we go about applying and finding out information? Well, if we go to the RACGP site, it's a little bit tricky because there's like education, whatever up here, and you hover over that, nothing happens. From a user interface perspective, if anyone from the College of General Practitioners is watching, I would suggest you want to fix your header bar here because it's a little bit hard to find things because you have to actually click on that to reveal the sub header bar. Now, normally on a, a website, one would expect that if I hovered over that, things would appear and that might make it easier for people to find information. So that's the first trick. You can, of course, Google RACGP specialist assessment. Uh, and you'll probably find a landing page. Although again, some of the pages are a little bit hard to find on this particular site. So anyway, this is where we go. Education, IMGs, click on that, and then we'll see a few options here. Now I mentioned there were some other routes. Um, one of them is called the General Practice Experience Pathway. That is for basically doctors who have general practice experience, but don't have qualifications. Today we're talking about specialist GPs in their own right, in their own country. So we'll click on fellowship programs for IMGs. We'll get to a landing page that talks about how they closed their recent program last year. And now they've got a new one called the Practice Experience Program. It's a self-directed education program to, designed to support non-vocationally registered doctors on their pathway to fellowship. Okay, that's a bit confusing because you're already a specialist and you're applying via this pathway, but we'll we'll click on this. So it's supporting non-registered doctors on their journey to RACGP fellowship. There's two streams, there's applicants, who do not hold a specialist qualification who apply through the standard stream. So that's the old uh, experience pathway. So that's the standard stream there. Okay. And then we've got uh, the one that we're most interested in is applicants with a specialist qualification who apply through the specialist stream. So we click on the specialist stream 
and then we get some more information here. So the Practice Experience Program Specialist Stream is for international medical graduates with a recognized overseas qualification who wish to qualify for the Fellowship of the College of General Practice. Uh, and applications are now open, okay? There's lots of information here, things like fees, where you can work, frequently asked questions. I'd encourage you to have a look at all the tabs. The one that you want to look at, think the comparability assessment might be the way, place you want to go, but I can tell you that you start going down a bit of a rabbit hole when you go into this one. Although it does explain the potential outcomes and what that means for you in terms of substantially, partially and not comparable. But I would suggest you want to start out here under the eligibility tab. And so this is the useful information because basically the way, and this is another difference with both the College of General Practice, the Royal Australasian College, as well as the Australian College of Rural Remote Medicine, they have looked at pro uh, similar programs in other countries and made an assessment of their comparability, which is different to most other colleges. Most other colleges will just assess candidates based on the imp information that they provide in their application. They don't go to the process of reviewing the actual program that that person has done. And you can see here that they have ranked qualifications from other countries in terms of being assessed as substantially comparable, partially comparable, and then finally, not comparable, which is a very long list. So there are, uh, and I think the way they do this is they, they've probably done all the main ones that they've had, you know, applications from in the past. But if you don't see yours on the list, it probably means they haven't had anyone from that particular country yet. So, and as it says, if your specialist qualification is not listed above, we have not assessed the curriculum. Your curriculum must be assessed. To do that, you must provide the following, an official copy of your training organisation curriculum, a letter confirming that it is their curriculum, et cetera, et cetera, and then they will assess it for you. So in order to be deemed substantially comparable, and remember substantially comparable is the thing you're aiming for, hopefully, because that usually means 12 months peer review with no exams. You have to have a qualification from Canada, the uh, Hong Kong Island counts, Malaysia counts, Malta counts, New Zealand obviously counts, as well as the United Kingdom. Interestingly, the US is not on that list. It is on the list below. Now, I wonder why that's the case. Part of the reason is rationale reason probably is that the length of training for the Board of Family Medicine is probably shorter than um, in Australia, I think maybe, but it's only partially comparable, which is interesting. Uh, and they've also got Netherlands, Spain, and Sweden. And then we've got a long list that aren't, including Belgium, two of them, Germany, uh, India, which is interesting. Uh, the DMB is a quite prestigious qualification. Uh, Kenya, Latvia, Nigeria, etc. And interesting down the bottom, the international membership for the College of General Practice in the UK does not count. Okay, that's a common question I get. What does that mean in terms of how you get assessed? This is the other interesting thing. The apply page is here. Steps you through your steps. There's a comparability assessment which takes up to 10 weeks after you put in your application. Now, the a unique feature of the College of General Practice is they don't interview you. They might contact you for more information according to their website, but they basically do a paper-based assessment and then give you the outcome within uh, up to 10 weeks. But that's not the only thing. You then need to have an appropriate job offer which has the right scope of practice, and that gets reviewed by the RACGP, and if approved, you can then apply for medical registration, and you can also start to apply for your provider number, which is essential in general practice. And so that's how it works. The in terms of comparability assessment, the outcomes substantially comparable meet these requirements, which are as follows. Uh, so we've got the substantially comparable requirements. So uh, you have to commence work within six calendar months of signing on the agreement, which provides some evidence of basic life support uh, and advanced life support. There's a workplace-based assessment program where someone external reviews your performance to make sure that you're up to standard and you have to complete, I think somewhere it says complete 12 months of, yes, uh, achieve fellowship within 12 months of commencing employment with a maximum time of 24 months allowed. So it's all done in work, okay? If we are partially comparable, there's a different set of requirements you have to complete at least six months full-time equivalent practice. You have to provide the basic life and advance for life support um, course certificates. And then you also have to pass uh, essentially all the colleges 
exams. So then you have a maximum of 48 months to complete that. Uh, and you achieve fellowship within 24 months with a time limit of 48 months. If we hop over now to the Australian College of Rural Remote Medicine, uh, where do we find the information about IMGs? Again, this should hover and pop up stuff because <laughs> look, reveal, big reveal. Anyway, so this is uh, fellowship, then they've got pathways, other avenues. So it's, this is a little bit unclear as well, I think. So here's the specialist pathway anyway. Okay, so let's look at the information here. So the specialist pathway leads to specialist registration in the specialty of general practice and fellowship of the college. Doctors who have ACRAM required recognized overseas applications in general practice or family medicine may apply for assessment. This includes Canadian and New Zealand GP specialists under ad undum gradum arrangements. I'm not sure what that means. Let's just Google that. I've not come across that term before. A degree conferred by Senate without examination. Okay. Um, Oh, grandfathering. Okay. So they've been grandfathered into the college because in some cases, the the um, especially the general practice are fairly new. Uh, and so they've just been conferred as a GP and um, because they've been working prior to the development of the specialty. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, again, it starts with assessing the qualification that you've done. But, and so we'll have, let's have a look at the list. I think it's a fairly similar list. We'll get the GP list up. College of General Practice list up as well and compare the two. So uh, on the ACRAM codified list, you will be eligible to be assessed if you've got one of these. So, okay, first thing, <laughs> Belgium Master Master. Okay, that, I think that's a different qualification, special certificate in general practice. So obviously no one's asked for that to be maybe assessed by the Royal Australasian College. I don't know. It looks like they have actually. So there's a discrepancy. Canada. Well, that's that's recognised by the RSCGP up here as well. Denmark, Hong Kong, Ireland, New Netherlands. So they don't tell you which is substantial or partial because again, uh, well, there's a different process of assessing you after that. But you can see similar things on this list to the two here, the substantially comparable list and partially comparable list. And again, I think there's a process that if your degree is not there, you can ask for it to be assessed. So that's the list. Uh, and then there's the codified list criteria. Now, you can be a set, your criteria for assessment with the College of Rural Remote is a fellow is a medical specialist who has been assessed as meeting the standards for providing high quality rural generalist medical practice. So it's a little bit more than just standard general practice. So this involves being able to provide emergency care and specialised medical care to community needs, safe care in a geographic, within working in geographic and professional isolation, working with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander and other groups. So they assess you for these eight domains and you have to have had three years experience providing clinical care away from ready access to specialist medical, diagnostic and allied health services. So, so that's kind of their test, I think of whether you've worked in a kind of rural or regional uh, or remote location. So their assessment process uh, is covered over in the guide and you can read this at your leisure, uh, but there's the criteria, here's the application process, the eligibility for the, uh, that's the eligibility for the curriculum. Uh, and the assessment is, this is where it's different. It's more standard to the other specialist pathways. There's a paper-based assessment and then a structured interview, which clarifies your application basically, okay? And then you get your outcome. And so your outcome, again, it has to either be substantially, partially or not comparable. If you're uh, substantially comparable, you need to do 12 months full-time equivalent with a minimum of three months with a supervisor approved by the college. And it may include a workplace-based assessment, okay? And then if it's partially comparable, you need to undertake up to a maximum of 24 months supervised practice with a minimum of six months and further training with a supervisor approved by the college. Uh, and you may well have to take examinations with the college. And then non-comparable, you're not eligible for the pathway, basically. So the last thing to look at is the fees. So let's just get those both up because the fees aren't insubstantial to be assessed for these pathways for any college. So if 
you're applying through the Royal Australasian College of General Practitioners, then your application is going to cost you $575 Australian dollars, that is. If you're on the program, and this includes your workplace-based assessment, you'll have to pay another $2,000. Now, you may be able to negotiate for your employer to pay that for you, or you'll definitely be able to claim that on tax at that point. There's also a membership fee. And if you are partially comparable, you will have to pay for the exams, and they total almost $10,000 to do. So difference, again, <laughs> a good incentive to get substantially comparable is the difference in total costs of the two pathways. And then over in the College of Rural Moat, there's an application fee, which is a little bit bigger. And then there is a paper-based assessment fee. There's a little asterisk there, GST free. I wonder why that's GST free, but anyway. And then there's a structured interview fee. There's a session you have to pay with a medical educator as well prior to commencement of the pathway. And if you have to do case-based discussions, they uh, cost you $665. There's also an ongoing support fee, and there might be other fees, like if there's a review of your progress or something like that. And then there's a full list of acronym assessments as well. So again, not an insubstantial thing. Probably up to this point, you will have to pay that for that yourself. And once you get a job, you may be able to negotiate for some of these costs to be paid, or again, they will be claimable on tax. You have no idea why some of these are GST free. There you go. So that's the two colleges of general practice in Australia and, and how you go about applying through the specialist pathway if you are a qualified general practitioner uh, in another country. Again, depending on how we go with this video in terms of numbers of likes, let's say I get maybe 50 likes or so, I might do a separate video that goes through the alternate routes for working as a general practitioner, say if you're experienced in general practice, but you don't have a qualification in another country. Uh, so thanks for watching the video. If you're getting good value out of my videos, I would encourage you to subscribe, turn on notifications, like and comment, and I will see you in another video.